Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Skyrim. Last time we almost finished off Shroud Hearth Barrow. We'll have to go back for the last little bit of treasure. Today, we're at Pine Peak Cavern. It's small and fairly insignificant, but we're going to clear it out. And there is one thing that's new and cool in here. Just like that, Pine Peak Cavern is cleared. Sometimes it really is that easy. So let me make a note of that. And now, let's look around in here. First, of course, we need to heal up. Nothing up here with bear was. There's nothing prior to this center rock, or in or around that center rock. But what there is is some stuff over here. Uh, let's look, look around these body parts first. Nothing but. This looks like it might be two, maybe just one corundivore veins. <laughs> There. There's an iron dagger mixed in with the body parts, and that's all. A smashed cart. We've got a pickaxe. We've got a coin purse. We've got a potion of ultimate healing. An unlocked chest. The potion of ultimate stamina and some gold. And a new book. Heavy armor forging. Now that's a smithing skill book. My smithing is already at 100. Let me go take it off that list. And let me run over to free skill boosts for smithing. Uh, with that, there are five remaining. There is just one skill book left to find, and there are four quests. Heavy Armor Forging by Sven Two Hammers. Heavy armor must be designed to take, to take a lot of punishment. It will receive direct blows from all sorts of weapons while protecting the wearer. Leather strips are used to make the straps and bindings in all armor. Iron and steel are easy to work. Just heat them up and pound them into shape. The heat of the forge is not that critical. Avoid filing off any of the metal. Always try to conserve the metal and work it back into shape. Iron armor requires a large number of iron ingots. A smith might need a couple of dozen to complete a full set of iron armor. Steel armor primarily uses steel ingots, but some iron is used as well. Dwarven armor is made from dwarven metal. The secret of this material was lost when the dwarves disappeared millennia ago. Now it can only be found as scrap in the ruins of their abandoned cities and fortresses. Orcish armor requires large amounts of orichalcum melded with a bit of iron. Heat should be used sparingly, lest it become brittle. The orcs are masters of this technique, but it can be learned by any smith with patience and skill. Steel plate mail is made by adding steel to molten corundum. The alloy is stronger than either metal by itself. Corundum is a finicky material, requiring the heat from the forge to be steady and not very much. Ebony can only be worked when heated. It will develop small cracks that eventually shatter the material if hammered cold. Unlike most other armors, ebony will not alloy with iron. It must be used pure. I can only tell you tales of how to make Daedric armor. I have never seen it myself, nor do I know anyone that has. The stories say that it should always be worked on at night, ideally under a new or full moon and never during an eclipse. A red harvest moon is best. Ebony is the principal material, but at the right moment a Daedra heart must be thrown into the fire. Well, there you go. Now that's it for Pine Peak Cavern. But what we're really going to do, what the focus of this video is, is going to be the pilgrimage up the 7,000 steps to High Hrothgar. Oh, we won't deal with High Hrothgar until the next video, but uh, making the pilgrimage is going to be fun. So, 
Let's begin our journey. Note these emblems along the way. There are ten of them, and you get a special blessing if you find them all. Read. Emblem 1. Before the birth of men, the dragons ruled all Mundus. Their word was the voice, and they spoke only for true needs, for the voice could blot out the sky and flood the land. There's Barknar. He tends to get killed by that cave bear right there. Well, we saved him, so he should be okay until it respawns. Then I won't be here to save him, and he will most likely die. But it's okay, because we got to talk to him. Alright. It's pretty straightforward right now. Hasn't quite turned cold yet, but it happens fast, and then it stays that way. Right here, we're already at the snow line. See the terrain change. Trees are all evergreens, and there's snow on the ground. Here's Emblem 2. Emblem 2. Men were born and spread over the face of Mundus. The dragons presided over the crawling masses. Men were weak then and had no voice. Onward. Emblem 3. The fledgling spirits of men were strong in old times, unafraid to war with dragons and their voices, but the dragons only shouted them down and broke their hearts. Emblem 4. Kine called on Parthernax, who pitied man. Together they taught men to use the voice. Then dragon war raged, dragon against tongue.
Those other two were just leveled. There's a fixed encounter with a frost troll up ahead. This one's always here, no matter your level, so... You need to be certain you're strong enough to fight one before you... Emblem 5. Man prevailed, shouting Alduin out of the world, proving for all that their voice too was strong, although their sacrifices were many-fold. Looks like a cave something might live in. But it's not. Emblem 6. With roaring tongues, the Sky Children conquer, founding the first empire with sword and voice, whilst the dragons withdrew from this world. Emblem 7. The tongues at Red Mountain went away humbled. Jürgen Windcaller began his seven-year meditation to understand how strong voices could fail. Emblem 8. Jürgen Windcaller chose silence and returned. The seventeen disputants could not shout him down. Jürgen the Calm built his home on the throat of the world. Oh, and look. We've just about made it. Statue of Talos. Emblem 9. For years all silent, the Greybeard spoke one name. Tiber Septim, stripling then, was summoned to Hrothgar. They blessed and named him Dovahkiin. There it is. High Hrothgar discovered. Need to make note of that, of course. And we have a few things to do here before going inside. Emblem 10. The voice is worship. Follow the inner path. Speak only in true need. And since we found all 10, we got the blessing Voice of the Sky. Animals will neither attack nor flee from you for 24 hours. The main thing is just, those are the doors. I don't think there's anything up the other one. There is something that seems to be missing, though. There's another pilgrim we're supposed to run into on the way up, and I didn't see her. Nor did I see a corpse. Let's loot these sacks and all these little plant offerings. Um, 
inside this empty chest, let's place Klimek's supplies. Return to Klimek. Oh, I don't want to run all the way back down. I'm just looking for that woman. Or at least for her corpse, because I didn't see either one. If I remember right, she's supposed to hang out around Emblem 5-ish. Let's head back there. Now we can fast travel back to High Hrothgar as soon as we're ready. I guess I could run all the way back down just as my means of looking for her slash returning to Klimek. You run into her before that fixed frost troll. I can't even remember her name. I just remember that she's there. So we should have run into her before this spot. She usually just spends all of her time sitting in front of an emblem. I've never seen her move from there. The main reason I'm so keen on finding her, besides basic completionism, is that she carries a copy of a book that I've never found anywhere else. This is where I usually find her, sitting right here. There's no sign of her. Give me just a minute to go look up her deal on the UESP. Rita, that's her name. Okay, well, she disappeared, and since I just reached High Hrothgar, she's been disabled from the game. But yeah, she's supposed to always be kneeling in front of the fourth emblem. I don't know why she's disabled from my game, but I'll tell you what she says. If you ask her who she is, she just sa she says, just a pilgrim. I'd prefer to leave it at that if you don't mind. You ask her if she heard the Greybeards called Dovahkiin, and she says, I was just outside Iverstead when it happened. It's an exciting moment. Nothing like this has happened in centuries. You can also ask her what she's doing, and she says, walking the steps, meditating on the emblems, I make this trip every few years. And, yeah, that's it. The book she has is Five Songs of King Wolfharth, and there is, an, and I just looked it up, and there is another place where we can find it. Alright, well, no Karita, but that's okay.
Let's return to Klimek. Get rewarded for that. There he is. Ah, good to see you again. How'd that delivery go? I delivered the supplies to High Hrothgar. Quite a climb, wasn't it? Anyway, much appreciated. Here, take this for your troubles. 1,500 gold for that. Not bad. Alright, that completes the miscellaneous quest, Climb the Steps. That completes all miscellaneous quests for Iverstead. Thanks again for the legwork. So with all that done, I can, number one, return to spamming Mage Light. Alteration to 87. That's excellent. And we can head to Lakeview and then to Falkreath. Next time, we'll actually go inside High Hrothgar and meet the Greybeards. Uh, we'll loot High Hrothgar. There's not really much in the way of awesome loot in there, but there are going to be several new books, which we'll have to read. But the best thing about being there is, number one, we'll advance the main quest. Number two, they're going to teach us two words of power while we're in there. One of them is the first word of the Whirlwind Sprint, which we need for... That treasure we had to leave behind. And we see his dresser is restocked. She's got a rare book, but it's one we read already, The Night Mother's Truth. But it's six, it is 6 a.m., so we're already set to go to Falkreath. Don't go setting the place on fire, everybody. Okay. Give a holler if you have any questions. Well met. Take a look. anything from my shop and oh, oh. can I get you some some may call this junk me I call them treasures nothing there I think we ended on apparel that's it for that all right be seeing you you're all set let's fast travel back to high Hrothgar I will end the video there. You're fine. My Brother. Next time, we'll go inside. So, here we are. We're back. Spoiler alert, we won't be fighting anything, so it's okay to spam Mage Light. And it's time to save and exit. This has been Let's Play Skyrim. We cleared out Pine Peak Cavern and we climbed the 7,000 steps. Next time, we'll enter High Hrothgar and see what the Greybeards want with us. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.